Making a life worth living in retirement with having is something I talk about regularly. Whether or not many people listen is really up to the technology companies, isn't it? I mean, in truth, we provide ourselves a belief that when we post something online, that the world has the right and opportunity to discover us, to find us, to learn our content, and to practically look at what we're trying to say. We also practically believe that the free technologies that we are offered to get us to sign up to provide our information is literally being utilized to help other people to discover us, right? I mean, isn't the entire realm of the living about having people in our lives that are important to our souls, not someone else's lawful right to tell us who should be important or how we should live our lives? Isn't that the reality? That when technology companies promise to play our productivity, our performance, our content in front of other people in our channels that we have lawfully connected to through their requirements of making sure they're actual friends or they're actually people who like us enough to decide that they'd like to socialize with us, which is in essence what Facebook should really be called. It's called a social network for a reason, because social networking is really about meeting new people, talking to them offline on the phone, hoping that the person we're talking to is really the individual that we're calling through the technology company that is governed by the federal government, like the telephone, which is supposed to protect our lawful rights underneath federal law to actually connect to the people that we presume to be calling. And in truth, when someone locally in a sheriff's department or otherwise, or some technological teenage geek, decides to play God in our life and take away our lawful federal rights to make phone calls, to produce for us results, to make a sale, to infiltrate a physician's office, or to do anything that we typically utilize a telephone for, we literally have to think about whether or not we've made the right decision to trust that technology company. You see, Facebook and others literally made the promise that their technology was free, but we all know that technology has a cost today. There's a cost to time. There's a cost to the development of our plan of marketing ourselves or our social projects or our professional business uh, legalities in terms of we are representing lawfully the companies and firms in which we're employed. And so if our legal rights are denied to us by technology companies, we are sort of not liable for that reality. They are liable for that reality. You see, when I try to produce a film that's worth listening to, I have to really think about what matters to people. What I've learned in my lifetime of teaching people of all ages is that the only thing that legally matters to people really is their personhood in terms of their life and how they want to conduct their lives. Their property in terms of their money, their finances, their automobiles, their toys like motorcycles and trucks and ATVs and all the stuff they get because they've produced a good quality life for themselves and a career that pays them a good income or a good salary and then that allows them to have things for themselves or their children or sometimes spoil them rotten. But openly, it's their property that they care about. And then finally, it's their paperwork, because all of us take our paperwork a little bit for granted, that we are all lawfully citizens of the United States, that under that law, we have the legal right to be federally protected by the laws of the land, and openly, our physicality is therefore protected underneath HIPAA laws and others from monstrous people stealing our physical health information and selectively sharing it with others in a way that harms our life. You see, there's a lot of illnesses in the world that people don't really want to share with other people that they're battling with or they're struggling with. There's a lot of mental health physicians who are supposed to be legally bound to not talking to other people about our life, but they have this little loophole that allows them to lie to themselves and other people saying if someone wants to pretend to be an important person in a person's life and literally calls them up and tells them something about what that person has said or done, it becomes a litigational abuse opportunity for not only that physician or clinician or whoever did the phone call in the first place, but it practically puts that person at legal risk to their legal lawful rights to their name. Now, when I talk about these things in all seriousness, what do you feel? 
Do you feel that I'm hell-bent on dishonoring these professions? Or do you actually start to realize how slippery slope it can be for people who police the world with their own ideals about what is and isn't lawful for a human being to do properly in their own property, their own paperwork, and their own personhood? You see, in this land, we have a religious stint, and that stint says that God loves all people, right? And that's prophet prophetically, practically, what evangelists are trying to promote, and they're trying to market that idea that if they market Jesus as a loving person, then more people will be drawn to Jesus. The reality is that Jesus is no longer with us. He's a figurehead. He's a deity of many religions. He is a man of God. He's the son of Lord God, mother and father God, as we learn in Genesis. But more importantly, we learn that there's God in three persons. Now, what literally does that mean? We talk about it a lot. We sing about it a lot in churches and synagogues. And at this time of the holiday season, we're literally faced with the Lord Christ's birth. Even though practically we've been lied to about the time of year that he was actually born and that we've now produced ourselves a winter holiday to give us time away from the cold weather and the snow and getting, keeping more people off the road this time of year when weather can be inclement and dangerous for driving. But openly I'm talking practically. I'm also talking lawfully about the realities of lies. That there are some lies that are perpetuated by generation after generation about history that allow us to produce a holiday. There are other lies that are perpetuated in people's minds about their lawful rights to mishandle another person's personhood, property, and paperwork. And that's a real problem. You see, the fine line is not the blue line of the police force that thinks that they're that management of mayhem and there's a thin line between good and evil, the reality is that men in their minds think that they are that manager of evil in a way, that they are the producer of goodness. But in truth, there are plenty of people who do damaging things by violating human rights laws, which I talk about regularly, federal laws, which literally protect our constitutional rights, in our personhood, paperwork, and property, which I always talk about to marketing, to politicians. But openly, there are people in this land who just don't care about the rights of other people at all. And that's the truth. That theft occurs because that individual who steals doesn't care about the property rights of someone else. They probably care about the rights to themselves unless they've been through it enough times to go, you know, easy come, you go, easy go, I'll just replace it with someone else's stuff. I won't literally work for a living. And there are people like that. There's also Hollywood that thinks they have the right to voyeur in on someone's life and make fun of them and make them into a total joke and make fun of their religion, but that's considered a parody when they portray someone who's not really that person and they monkey it up a bit. But at what point do we stop to think, is what I'm doing lawfully right in front of the house of the Lord? Now, see, old school ways of different types of religious faith that were in season far before the popes came into being in Catholicism and other aspects of religion and in terms of government provided God literal rights in people's lives. When a person got ill, they went to nature and found herbs and other remedies right there from the fruits, from the bees, from the trees, from the plants, from the ground roots or what have you, and I'm probably repeating myself, but openly I'm talking about a religious aspect of a Wiccan philosophy that people make fun of. Yet we love the film Harry Potter, and I think, is that not Wiccan? They're talking about good and evil. They're talking about magic. They're talking about using wands and casting spells and little goblins and all sorts of creatures that we've never seen before in our life unless all that stuff in Hollywood isn't really made up and those are really actors from those planets, but who knows? I guess that's sort of my little point today, that we can't tell who anyone is unless we're literally face-to-face, -face, and even then we can be lied to, as it was pointed out to us in uh, DiCaprio's Catch Me If You Can film. I have absolutely seen people in restaurants walk on the job, pretend to be someone, and then walk off just a monkey with someone's food or their lawful rights to be protected in their food 
intake. I have siblings that I literally say no to. I don't want to eat that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. And they just say, so what? We're going anyway. I did that one time in my life with a child who was in my home. He was underage, and I wasn't going to allow my son and that child to stay within my house while I was not there because the last time I did that with my son and his friends, they destroyed my property. They ripped arms off of things that had value to my life, antiques and other things. They thought it was just fun to do. It was immoral, it was illegal, it was illicit behavior, and I don't tolerate that from young boys. You see, in order to manage people, we sometimes have to move them out of our lives. But at the same time, there are people who are moms in this land who think they have the right to mismanage information. I literally spent an hour and a half on a telephone call with a lawyer who professed that she could help me in a legal situation. The woman never returned my call again. She took in all that private information, and what I understand is she shared it with other family members, which was not her lawful right to do based on the constructs of that telephone call. She violated her own ethics, she violated the rules about her profession, and openly, what happens to her? I'm not sure. You see, people gossip all day long. They lie, they steal, they cheat, they pretend to be things they're not online and off. I literally had a lady compliment me about my profile, and I thought, wow, if you only knew my struggle, maybe you wouldn't say such a thing. But I don't know her all that well, and I simply complimented something she achieved. But it's okay. She's trying to build relationship with me. Maybe she needs my help. Maybe I need her help. But here's what I know about life. That in today's world of technology, we have no way to prove one thing about whether or not technology is actually working for our rights to be served underneath federal law. You see, telecommunications are what social media channels really operate on. They operate on telephone lines. And telephone lines have rules and regulations about the use of that technology. That we literally are protected in our technological use of the telephone that says that no one has the right to listen in on our call. No one has the right to record our call based on what our state laws are. And openly, don't you think it's just a good professional realistic practice to tell people if you're recording their calls? just so that they get put on a little bit more of a pause sometimes instead of a reactive state, that they might produce a different tone, that they might literally tell you off completely so you have it on file. But openly, there are people who record calls to harm other people's lives, to try to manhandle, to try to manage, to try to destroy a human being's right to be literally upset with people violating their rights every day. You see, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for people. The only question is, are we trying to make a difference for our benefit and our control in their life? Or are we trying to make a difference for the spirit and the soul that God put in that individual that is so more than proven in them that we can't tolerate it, and yet we think we have the right to literally destroy it? You see, there are lovers of this land, and there are destroyers of this land. The land of the Lord is what we call America, but really the rest of the world are made by God too. Because the Tower of Babel existed in the Bible, it says that the Lord split us into multiple languages and different nationalities and things like this. So we had to learn to talk cross-culturally. We had to learn to speak different languages. And openly, we have a United Nations that does that regularly with really world-class interpreters. We hope. The entire policy of a nation can be impacted and infiltrated by a lying interpreter. My guess is they have checkers of interpreters in that situation so that those things can't happen. There's a main interpreter and then there's others listening in to make sure it's not a lie, to make sure the translation's right, to make sure they get nailed if they lie about it. And openly that is the rightful way to handle something. In our lives, we have people who think they have lawful rights to us that may not have one lawful right at all. The only question is whether or not police care about the liars of the world or whether or not they are not participating but they are allowing things to be harmful to someone because they believe they have some lordly right to say no to a person's right to be who they are. Now it sounds like I'm talking about one topic when I'm really talking about another but I'm really getting back to the realities of technologies. That if you've been looking for a job for a long time, but you can't seem to get anyone in the career field to respond, we have to question 
whether or not our emails are actually getting through to the people that they're supposed to be received by. And if they're not being received, then we have to have another method or means under the telecommunications laws and rights of using a telephone to pick up the phone and call an HR director and say, I literally sent you a resume, did you receive it? Yet we have secretaries and receptionists at these mega conglomerate companies in Indiana that says, gosh, I'm sorry, if you don't practically know that person's attend in, in, uh, extension line, I am not going to allow you to reach to anyone in our public company, our publicly traded company. Now think how that sounds. It's a publicly traded company. They're out in public marketing themselves. And you want to talk to somebody in a particular field, but in a particular department, but they won't let you do it. So the receptionist is making a legal decision on behalf of the entire organization, the entire president who runs that company, who operates that company, entire ownership, and the people which she's denying the lawful right to have a conversation with. At what point does federal law kick in and put that little receptionist's little buns in jail for violating people's telecommunications rights to make phone calls? or to do anything to promote themselves into a higher level of living, a better paycheck, better revenue for their family, and openly a way to protect their lives from litigation abuse. You see, litigation abuse is when someone infiltrates a technology or lies to a technology company about their lawful rights to interfere with someone's right to find counsel. When that person can't find counsel, they are put at a disadvantage. For those of us who do the research and go to the libraries and the law labs to research the law, we can cite law, but then someone else can threaten us with this little idea that unless you're a trained lawyer and going to law school, then you can't possibly know the law. That's not true. Underneath federal law, we have the right to basically represent ourselves. We have no one's right to deny us that right, yet people do it all day long. And I have to talk about this because in my life, that's literally happened. I've had my rights denied completely. I've had contact information stolen, business cards fondled through, coming and going from my vehicle, a legally protected vehicle of my business that I did not give one key to any person with. And if I talk about it honestly, what's going on, what can family try to lie and say? That it's a mental health issue, that I'm not remembering things right. Nope, I'm actually very disciplined in how I live my life what pockets I put things in, where I put things in my wallet, yet someone thought they had the right to put their hands in my pants, pull out my wallet, and take papers out of them that was not their lawful right to do. Proving it is what one of my middle sisters get jokes about. If she's doing this, then prove it. I should not have to prove it if she is not illegally doing things. For her not to deny it is a problem. For her to deny it is also a problem because anybody can lie today. The only question is about what we lie about. I talked about that in a previous audio cast. But practically, when we're looking at our legal rights, where do our rights begin and end in the presence of another person's heart, mind, soul, and body? Rape is when someone touches our body without our permission. How many people have put your, their hands on you without your permission in the socializing in circles? You see, underneath the HR law, there's only certain parts of the body that someone can touch to get your attention. And literally, if they're doing it otherwise, they have violated federal law. Also, taking things out of a person's pockets or wallets is theft. But openly, there are moms and sisters and people of family of people who might think that it's okay for them to do because they're family, not under the law. Now, openly, we can talk all day long about these issues, but the reality is you are wondering why should you listen? Because if something like this can happen to a little guy like me who loses his life every day from the lie, it can most likely happen to someone like you if any other person decides to attack and harm your life. In this marketing moment, I'm not really marketing anything other than ideas. The ideas of liberty the ideas of justice, the ideas of property rights, the ideas of personhood rights to our own bodies to be protected from rape, harm, disgust, disguise, all the things that happens from identity theft and every other little aspect of today's modern literal living world. That when we take away those rights to people, we lose our own rights in our own life. 
Now, this has been Blake Henson of Blaze Communications LLC saying thanks for listening.